You don't need this standing mixer or a stack of nesting bowls. All you need is this 13 inch metal mixing bowl. I'm Danielle Spencer. I'm the pastry chef at Winsun Bakery in Brooklyn, New York. This bowl saves you money, space, and does a lot for you. When I say this bowl saves you money, I mean it. You can find this type of bowl for just $4 in comparison to a 20 plus dollar nesting mixing bowl set or a $600 standing mixer. To show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to demonstrate a loaf of bread. The first step to this uh, hand mixed loaf of bread is adding your liquids into your bowl. So for working smarter, not harder here, I know that this bowl has a larger surface area, keeping my liquids closer to the bottom of the bowl so that when I'm incorporating the dry ingredients, here we have three different types of flour, I'm creating less of a mess and keeping everything more inside of the bowl. So the fact that this bowl has a flat bottom is helping me fold it by allowing it to spin very easily as I'm doing a little light mix. This bowl has a built-in lip on the side here, which can also act as a handle for your hand. This one allows your hand to just like lay flat on it with your thumb on it, creating a much more natural movement. So at this point, the bread is well mixed by hand and every ingredient is fully incorporated. And then we're going to go into doing a simple bread fold with slightly damp hands. You're going to go in on both sides and you're gonna start at the top and pick it up, stretching, bringing it to the bottom. And then you're going to bring the bottom up, bringing it to the top. And then each side you're going to bring over while stretching. The surface area of this bowl being so wide is really necessary for doing a fold because you would like to have as much space as possible to bring the dough high and back down. So the bread is folded now and we're going to let it rest, continue some folds, but eventually ferment. And I know that the fermentation is going to go well because of the even surface area of this bowl. If the bread is not proofed properly, the shaping of it, there's a lot of variables that could go wrong in terms of having a very dense, low crumb loaf. Let's talk about air. In pastry, I'm going to be making a simple cake batter by hand, which will be incorporating air into your butter and sugar, building it up to create a light product. Also to be whipping egg whites to break them down by adding air into them so they can have the volume necessary to have an overall light, airy cake batter. So the first step of our cake batter is to cream the butter and the sugar. You would always assume you needed an electric mixer to do the creaming process because it's quite intimidating incorporating air by hand without having a dead arm afterwards. But this bowl helps incorporate that air for you when you put it in on its side. So you can tell with just whipping this butter and sugar by hand for maybe no less than four minutes. It's already fluffier. It is lighter in color. And you can also tell that the sugar granules have dissolved into the butter, which is an important part of the creaming process. So I can tell that this has the right amount of air in it. So we're going to move on to folding in the rest of our ingredients. Earlier in my first demonstration, I was turning the bowl as I was folding my bread from the bottom up. I am turning the bowl as I fold the egg yolks gently into my butter and sugar. I mentioned why a 13 inch metal bowl, but I said that size because it is just big enough to make like earlier one loaf of bread or to fold a small amount of butter and sugar together. So at this stage, I'm going to stop and then we're going to whip up our egg whites. Another reason why air is crucial for this step and why this bowl is crucial for that is we're going to be breaking down the protein in these egg whites by adding air into it, creating a whipped product. And again, that makes for a lighter and fluffier cake. 
So with the same technique as I did the butter and sugar, I'm going to be holding the bowl on its side, a little less in the beginning because the eggs are very fluid, but then it'll be more on its side once I get them foaming. The angle of the side of the bowl is allowing you to easily put it on its side and have it hold stable instead of a bowl that was completely rounded and very tall. It wouldn't like allow you to have this ledge. And so the ledge of the bowl on the side here is giving you a lot more control. So now that they're a lot foamier, I'm going to put the bowl completely on its side so you see the lip of it is touching the table and start to create that like dramatic vortex of incorporating air into your wipes. Normally what most people have on hand are maybe your, your classic hand beater. But when you use a hand beater, it's very difficult to kind of rotate it around the bowl because it's always knocking, creating that very loud noise that causes you to be like, okay, I'm going back into the center of the bowl. But by only being in the center of the bowl, you're not actually creating that much air. Therefore, you would be mixing your egg whites for longer than I just did by hand. So as you can see, I've been holding the bowl in the same exact way, and I've been consistently folding each ingredient. This is really all it takes to create what can look like an advanced product. As I'm folding, the air that has been incorporated inside is still in there. And you can also tell that all of your air is still inside of there because the batter is like very fluffy. So these are just two examples of what this bowl can do for you. But the main point is that it's extraordinarily versatile, incredibly cheap, and saves you space. I would encourage the home baker to try any sort of project with this bowl because if I can do a hand creamed cake and a hand mixed loaf of bread, I feel like the possibilities are endless.